check it out. I got my first job. This is interesting. These are utility knife blades, but they're made of plastic. For whatever reason, somebody wanted me to make some out of plastic. And then he said, what about a logo? I was like, well, send me a logo. I can deal with that. So here's how I did it. First, I designed the logo in Tinkercad. The, not the logo, the um, thing. Here's his logo. So I turned it black and white and jacked up the contrast. And then I used the function in Simplify 3D to extrude an image into a 3D shape. Once I had the image into a 3D shape, I made it really tall. Let me show you here. This is a cropped version, actually. I should be able to make it display the bits. There it is, see? This was actually from here to here. Oh, you can't even see that. This was actually from down here all the way up to here. I stretched it out to get rid of all the noise. And that gave me a clean cross section that I used as a cut into a shape of a razor blade. So I made it one edge, since there's no way I can do an overhang double edge blade, because it's just a plastic blade. And I cut his logo out of it. And the result is this. Now you notice it's a little messy here. I've actually fixed that as well. Even single extrusion fill couldn't properly fix that. But turns out all I had to do was change from three perimeters to one perimeter. And look how much better that came out. Isn't that cool? That's pretty neat, and that'll fit in any utility blade um, holder, knife, whatever. You obviously can't cut with it, I mean, it's, it's, it's plastic, but pretty cool. That'd make a nice little business card, too. And like a nice little handout. That's pretty neat. I don't know what they want to do with them, but it's pretty cool. And um, I bring it into Simplify 3D, and I set myself up with a array of them to print on the ender. So here's all of my copied duplicated blades and all the processes only the one process has I do it in sequential so it does one blade then the next and the next these are so low that there's no interference with the hot end it's only um 0.9 millimeters thick so I can actually butt these right up next to each other like a half millimeter apart but this is good enough I can do 12 at a time so only the first one has the skirt and that is so that I make sure the nozzle is properly extruding plastic. And then it prints this one. Now, because it's going to jump from this one to another one, I didn't care about the order because there was no chance of interference. Um, because there's um, it's jumping from one to the other, you don't have to do a second skirt. You just need that skirt the first time. Then after that, it will go from print to print. So I can show you. So it does that one, that one, that one, then that one, 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 that one. And it will mosey right along and print them all out that's pretty cool i guess i got about four hours into it not bad including the fine tuning to end up with the final one here where the logo is nice and visible and crisp yet still um strong enough that it won't just fall apart on you i was worried about that little part right there being a little too thin but using the single perimeter it's fine now it's plenty strong and i don't have to worry about it falling apart so this will be nice and durable within a reasonable limit of plastic. There is a more interesting way I could do this. I could make the first layer solid with no cutout and then print the rest of it with a cutout. Now I can't do this for him, it would be too much work. It would, it, would just, it would add a tremendous amount of work. The only way this is practical is if I can just hit print and walk away from it. All the work would be in designing it. But if somebody, if you guys wanted to do something like this and you wanted to make this a little more interesting, um, make the first layer without the cutout. So take two of these knives, put them together, the first one without a bevel, and just have the first layer, the first 0.2 or um, 0.4 millimeter, be um, without the cutout. And then after it's done drawing it, what I would probably do is a sequential print where it would only do 0.4 millimeters at a time, and then move on to the next one, next one, next one. The reason for that is, while it's going to the next one, you could take a Sharpie and color the plastic in where the logo is going to be. Just take your Sharpie and just color that area in, you know, make it big enough to cover the whole area. And then when it comes back to print this, it'll continue printing this and raising up. And what you'll have is you'll have the logo filled in. You'll have a solid back, and then the inside of the logo will be black because you colored it with a Sharpie. 
that would be pretty cool. So basically, it would look like that, but with a solid back instead of a holy back. But that's if you're just doing one for yourself or doing a couple for yourself. If you're mass producing them, this, that doesn't make sense. You would have to use a um, uh, a dual extruder, you know, you, a dark filament for the bottom layer and a light filament for the top layer. Or better, um, light filament, silver for the bottom, then a layer of dark, and then the rest silver. This way it'll be silver on both sides, but you'll have that one layer of dark inside there giving you the depth for your cutout. Because obviously if you put this behind something different colored, yeah, it's harder to see the logo. But that's pretty cool. I thought you guys would get a kick out of that little neat little tips and tricks um, video for how to do cool, interesting stuff with a 3D printer. You guys have a great night.